Hello, welcome back to The Night Shift. It's been a hot minute, but we're back. And we're not back with just one movie, we're back with five, but I'll get into that in a second. I'm joined by Abby Smith, my co-host. Hi, Abby. Hey there. I... Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> we're really good at this. <laughs> it shows that it's been a while. Um, <laughs> we're a little rusty. Anyway, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing a couple films this time just because Abby and I watch a lot of horror movies. A lot of horror movies come out, and so these videos take a while to make. And so I thought this would be a faster way to, you know, knock out some films was to talk about a bunch of them all at the same time. So tonight we're going to be covering His House, Train to Busan, Freaky, Wrong Turn, the new one, and Run. Run! <laughs> Run, Abby, go! Go! This isn't a bit! He's in the house. What, what film would you like to start out with, Abby? Since it's fresh on both of our minds, Wrong Turn. I believe we both watched it today, correct? That is correct. Correct. Let's start there. Wrong Turn is about a group of millennial pals who decide to hike the Appalachian Trail, but then they take a wrong turn, uh, if you will. I will. Get off the trail, and then they run into people who terrorize them. <laughs> there you go. Because we have so many films to talk about, we are going to limit ourselves to one minute each in just giving our basic thoughts about the film, and then we will have to give our ratings. So, Abby, if you want to cue up the timer, I will uh, be brave and try to go first uh, with my minute about this movie. Are you ready? Okay, wrong turn. I thought it started out pretty fine. I actually was like, oh, some of the characters are doing different things than what it looks like their stereotype might do. In, in for example, there's the douchey guy who's kind of a butthole, but then all of a sudden he's hugging his gay friend and comforting him. And I went, oh, that's different. The movie had some of those character surprises that I liked. But for every character surprise that I liked, there was characters just doing completely random things that were super stupid and I hated. Also, a large majority of this movie is watching evil cultists, you know, uh, discipline the teenagers for what they did when it's like you're evil cultists so it's not really fun to watch this movie has a lot of what the f moments and some of those really made me laugh it felt like it had a bajillion twists but at the end of the day I don't feel like it's a very good movie but I kind of enjoyed watching it not a bad first moment with this franchise <gasps> that was beautiful you nailed it <laughs> Thank you. I felt so afraid the whole time, but I had this voice in the back of my head going, these are really low stakes, man. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to lie. I'm nervous too, so. Um, so my rating for uh, Wrong Turn, I'm going to give it a D plus. All right, Abby, are you ready? Ready. Okay, so Wrong Turn 2020 slash 2021. Um, I agree. It started out strong. Uh, the cinematography and production was pretty like decent at some really good gore which I was not expecting um because it became evident pretty early on to me that I should keep my expectations low for this film <laughs> so um but the it started out I liked most of the characters until they started making decisions that did not match up with their like character development previously which just made the film really bizarre to watch you couldn't predict anything which not that you want to predict what the movie does but the point of character development is to understand the motivation of the character, I think. So when that is constantly changing, it's like, ah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> um, the uh, cultists, similar thing. I thought I knew what they're about. And then they're like, no, we're about this. And then they're like, oh, no, actually we do this thing. And it's like, eh, are you bad? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you bad? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I mean, obviously they're bad. But anyway, uh, I would give it a D. So let's do run next. Quick little run synopsis. You have a mom played by Sarah Paulson and you have her daughter who has what looks like so many health issues. The main one just being being disabled and having to, you know, use a wheelchair to Well, I can't really tell, but just a bunch of other health issues. And it's about their relationship. The less that you know about this movie, the better. But basically something happens that causes the daughter to be suspicious of her mom. And that's all I'll say. Tell me your thoughts, Abby. Okay. 
so I knew what this movie was about going into it. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's pretty evident, at least to me, from the trailers. Um, and it's, I mean, inspired by something that has actually happened before. There's a pretty common story that people know about where it was a mother-daughter relationship that was very similar. Um, so I expected this movie to do a lot with that, like maybe take it to the next level. Um, I was... It was not one that I like particularly wanted to watch going in because it's just like heavy. Um, but I was disappointed with how little they actually did with this the possibilities plot wise. Instead of taking things a step further, they're like, oh, here's this thing that happened. And we're going to tell like maybe half of it and then just like end it there. So um, that being said, acting was incredible. It was very suspenseful, which I didn't expect. Um, I was like really on edge the whole time. And that's all you'll ever know, audience, of Abby's <laughs> that's thoughts. That's all you'll know. Except that I would give Ryan a C. Ready? I'm ready. Go. All right, Sarah Paulson is just a god. She's such a good actor, and so I always loved seeing her. I really liked seeing this new actor who played her daughter, I thought that she did a really good job. And if my research is correct, um, she actually, uh, you know, is disabled. So I thought that was really cool watching the movie, uh, not cheering that she's disabled, just cheering that it was cool that they had a person who is actually authentic for the role, playing this role. It made it feel all the more, uh, you know, just suspenseful. There's a lot of great suspense scenes and good use of you know, the daughter having to be intelligent as she navigates this house with, with, with her disability. She's, you know, at a disadvantage. Um, unfortunately, uh, this movie has a really terrible ending, in my opinion, that kind of destroys all the groundwork that was laid beforehand to where I never thought about it after I finished watching it. I would give Run a, a C minus. I give it a C minus. Okay, okay. Let's do Freaky Friday. Okay, I mean Freaky, not Freaky Friday, because I was thinking about Freaky Friday. <laughs> I mean, it's basically Freaky Friday. <laughs> Freaky um, was essentially Freaky Friday, but instead of a mother and daughter, it's a high school girl and a serial killer, and they switch bodies. What is going to happen? <laughs> So. Surprise! <laughs> ah! <laughs> so, Freaky. Um, I knew exactly what to expect going in. Freaky Friday. Okay, got it. And then um, there weren't, like, any twists. <laughs> it was 100% what I thought it was going to be. And nothing more. Um, and I don't really know... I feel like saying that alone is kind of spoilery. It's like, oh, nothing else happens. Sorry. Um... That being said, it was pretty gory in parts, which was fun and unexpected. Um, along that same line, though, the genre of the movie was actually kind of confusing. I thought it was going to be funny and a comedy, and while it did have funny moments, it wasn't actually really lighthearted, generally. Yeah. Um, like, it, in the beginning of the movie, I was like, ah, this is really dark. What's happening? And then, like... It just kept flip-flopping and never really tied the gap between being dark and scary and being light and quirky. So, Freaky, um, I would rate with a C+. Plus. Bow, bow, bow. Start. Freaky, yeah, this is one of the best premises that I've ever heard of. And I'm like, it's such an obvious one where you can take Freaky Friday and you can add it to genre pieces like a horror movie. So it's a really great idea to be like, let's switch a teenage girl with a serial killer. But yeah, unfortunately the writers of this movie, that was like the only good idea that they had. <laughs> Cause it's just, it's the, the movie's not bad, but it's just so like, it just, I just kept going, okay, the movie's happening, but it, there was never really a scene that was exciting. And right away the movie is kind of heavy, like you said. And you know, a big part of the, plot is the character is the main character's dad having passed away and it seems like everyone's telling her to get over it and i'm like it's only been a year leave her alone goodness gracious um vince vaughn's pretty funny in this but again he could have been funnier they could have written better scenes for him um the gore is pretty cool but yeah it wasn't that great 
What's your what did you land on for your rating? I landed on a, a C minus, I think again, because it's not bad, but I was disappointed. So I give it that little extra, little extra, little, little line just to show that I'm displeased with it. I'm displeased. <laughs> so next we're going to talk about his house. This is going to be the hardest one for me to talk about because I think it's the one I watched. the. We watched this one together. We watched it a while back. But yeah, his house is about some refugees um, just trying to escape their war-torn country. They've arrived in the UK and they are trying to get some housing and they end up getting a house and they're pretty excited about it even though it's a really kind of dumpy house and a lot of the people don't seem to really care about them and they don't know anyone. Again, like they, they fled this crazy situation but they're gonna try to make it work. But then, in typical horror movie fashion, this house has some some shenanigans up its sleeve for these two characters. It was shenanigans. Shenanigans. I'll go first. Okay, so his house um, was really nicely done. Um, it was really fun to watch. It was actually genuinely scary at moments, which is not super like common to me. Um, so that was really exciting. The premise of the movie was really interesting. It had some really interesting concepts that I feel like weren't very well played out. Um, it was like, ooh, that's spooky. And then they didn't ever elaborate or bring that element back. There also is a very um, significant plot twist uh, that comes in the film that kind of explains some things and the things that haunt them. And I just did not buy it. Um, it not that I didn't buy that it could happen. It was very realistic and very tragic, but it just didn't make sense within the context of the film to me. Um, and like just the way that the characters continued living their lives. You have to go. No, you have to give your rating. Oh, oh, oh. Um, B minus. Go. His house, man, time, memory. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I saw this movie and uh, some stuff happened in it. And, you know, the, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, there were some really scary parts. I remember being scared. Um, there's some, yeah, there's some use of uh, quick footsteps and I didn't Ooh. like that, but I did like it because it was scary. Um, and I felt very, a lot of affection for the main characters uh, with their situation at the beginning. And I'm in agreement with Abby where, you know, it just, the way it ends up playing out at the end was just kind of confusing and it kind of took away the emotion. But uh, a, a pretty solid film, looks very nice and acted excellently. Sorry, I didn't remember. <laughs> Things happened. <laughs> What's your rating for this film? I give this a C plus. I'm surprised that I ended up rating it higher than you because I remember when we watched this together, I couldn't stop bitching about it and how upset I was. <laughs> 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 but yeah, whatever. For me, I think my rating, it's like, I have no ill will towards the movie. It is just that like, I kind of never thought about it again after we watched it. Like you said, it's one of the few movies to actually legitimately scare me in a long time. It was very refreshing to be like, oh, I'm scared, so. More gentle clap this time. Why don't you tell us about our last film, which is Train to Busan. Train to Busan. Okay, so this is a movie about a father and daughter who the daughter wants to go back to the mother's house, who is this guy's ex-wife. So he is taking his daughter to see her mother for her birthday. And then zombies happen. Okay, my one minute thing on Train to Busan. So this movie was amazing. Um, I did not expect to like it. Zombies are not really my genre. I usually get really bored because there's not a lot that you can do with zombies in my opinion, except they did. Um, it was exciting the whole time. It was emotional. I cried twice. Which is, okay, outside of horror is not really saying a lot for me because I'll cry at almost anything. <laughs> but it was so good. Um, the character development was stellar. 
the gore was amazing. The zombies were really, really scary. I was scared the whole time. Um, and it, the way it played out kind of reminded me of a video game in that it like gets more and more intense. It's like they're getting to the next level and then they like got to the boss and it was just, it was great. Um, sorry, I still have five seconds and I like only raved about it, but that's all. <laughs> I think you crushed it. Good job. Okay. Thank you. I give Train to Busan an A+. Plus. I don't think that anything could have been improved about it. It's the first A plus on the night shift. Oh, 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 oh. Party time. There's confetti on the screen. I'm excited to hear what you thought. Oh, you're not going to be. Let's go. <laughs> okay, go. Train to Busan is a piece of shit. I hate it. Just joking. You're just Had wrong. to do it, though. <laughs> No, Train to Busan is an excellent movie. It's been on my list for a long time as well. I'm glad to finally watch it. Shout out to my sister. She's the one who said I should do it. Mm. And I was like, okay, I'll do it for you because I love you. Um, I will admit this movie wasn't as good to me as it was hyped up to be. So I thought it was really good, but I thought maybe I'd get a little bit more. But yeah, this thing's a roller coaster of emotion. This movie doesn't give a sh about characters it will kill people whenever it wants to and i found that really refreshing because it made me tense i was scared i kept clutching my pillow and i kept saying i know this is a movie but i'm on the edge of my seat the main little girl is so dang cute i love her i want her to be my child and i will take her to the fair and buy her cotton candy that's all baby <laughs> Amazing. So I'm going to give Train to Busan a solid B. Okay. Because it's a good flick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to The Night Shift. I hope you enjoyed the horror bag or whatever we called it. Let us know if you like this style or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always happy to improve. So if this doesn't work, then let us know. I'm sure Abby and I will, will keep tinkering with it as well, but- We love you. Yeah, we do. <laughs> well, and I love you too, Abby. It was so good to see you. So good to have you on the show. Mm, good to be uh, here. You're my spooky buddy. Yeah, thank you. You're my spooky buddy. Spooky buddy, spooky buddy. I spooked my buddy, my buddy spooky. All right, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>